primary and secondary succession, continuing with ecology. So, in 1883, the volcanic island of Krakatoa in the Indian Ocean was blown to pieces by a volcanic eruption. Literally blown to pieces. Well, 14 years later, there were 49 different plant species. There were lizards, bats, and birds. So, we have this island that was literally blown to pieces, destroyed. And then just in 14 years, you have these plants showing up. You have this life, these lizards, these bats, these birds. By 1929, a forest containing over 300 plant species had grown. So we have this island that's literally blown to pieces. All life is destroyed, but it bounces back. Now, this is an example of what is called ecological success succession. It's a series of more or less predictable changes that occur in a community over time. Now, ecosystems change over time, especially after disturbances like an island being blown to pieces by a volcanic eruption. And as some species die out, new species move in. The volcanic eruption on the island of Krakatoa can cause new land to form or sterilize existing areas. And when we look at this word sterilize, we mean get rid of all life there, make it completely clean. No more life there. Now, this can lead to what's called primary succession. Now, this is succession that begins in an area with no remnants of an older community. So, primary succession is referring to this sterilizing of existing areas where there is no life. There is no older community. You can find primary succession where glaciers are retreating. There was no life there. Well, when the glaciers are melting and moving back, new land is exposed and new communities and ecosystems can start to grow there. Now, if there was no life there before, but it starts developing over time. That's an example of primary succession. Okay, so continuing with primary succession, the first species to colonize a barren area where there is no life are called pioneer species. Now, one ecological pioneer is lichen that grows on bare rock. Over time, the lichen convert or fix atmospheric nitrogen into useful forms for other organisms. They break down the rock and add organic material to the soil. And certain grasses, like those found on Krakatoa, are also known as pioneer species. So pioneer species, if we look back up here, are the first species to colonize a barren area where there was no life. And that's why they're called pioneer, because they're the first ones there. That's why it's called primary succession, because it is the first time it is happening. And then we have secondary succession. Well, sometimes existing communities are not completely destroyed. When a disturbance happens that doesn't completely destroy a community, secondary succession happens. Now, secondary succession is a type of succession that occurs in an area with communities that survived a disturbance. There's still some soil there that was there to begin with. There was still some life there that was there to begin with. Now, secondary succession proceeds faster because the soils are already in the area and as a result, new or existing vegetation can grow. Examples of where secondary succession can happen is areas where hurricanes hit, farming, logging, deforestation, and during secondary succession, the land, after that disturbance or an event, usually returns to what is called its climax community, and we'll talk about what that means momentarily. So here we have a picture. This is, might be something that you see on your state assessment. And if we look right here, we're trying to figure out, is this primary or secondary succession? That's the only type of succession it is. There either was life there or there wasn't. That's it. There's no in between. So if I look right here, they throw all these things in. And right here, none of this really matters. I mean, we can see trees. It doesn't matter that they're shade tolerant. None of that really matters. What matters is at the beginning right over here. So here I have bare rock. There was nothing living here. And then we have the lichen that appears, and then it proceeds, and then later down the road, we have our climax community, which is going to be uh, a bunch of trees. Now, the key part right here is the bare rock. Because it was bare and there was nothing living here, we have a pioneer species. It is the first time something's coming in, so I know right away, because it's the first time and nothing was here, I know that it's primary succession. If I take a look at this example, this is an abandoned agriculture uh, land uh, illustration that somebody has done. And we see agricultural land kept in an artificial seral stage um, after being abandoned, blah, blah, blah. We have eventually trees established. The key part is right here. After being abandoned, 
wild grasses from wind blown and dormant seed in the ground take over. So what we have here is before this land was plowed to be used for farming, we have life that was there and all the life begins to return and new grass shows up because wild grasses from wind blow in. So we have new species of grass showing up. But because there was life before this was plowed for the crops, it's called secondary succession. So that's the difference between primary and secondary succession. Secondary succession, life is happening for a second time, returning back to its climax community. Okay, so why does succession happen? Well, every organism helps change and sort the environment. As one species alters its environment, and alters means change, so as one species changes its environment, other species may find it easier to survive. For example, as lichens release organic matter for soil, mosses and other plants can colonize and grow. As trees grow their branches and leaves, it produces shade and cooler temperatures near the ground. So all these organisms, you know, that may be dying from too much heat, they can, they can go ahead and, you know, build their habitats in the shade where the cooler temperatures are so they can find it easier to survive. All right, climax communities. Let's talk about what that means. Now, scientists used to think that succession follows the same path in a general time frame. However, new evidence suggests otherwise. New evidence shows they do not always follow the same path and don't always become uniform and stable. When we say uniform, we mean exactly the same. Now, succession after natural disturbances. Well, coral reefs and rainforests recover from storms and temperate forests and grasslands recover from wildfires. Secondary succession in healthy ecosystems following natural disturbances often reproduces the original community. Now, some communities end up looking like patches in a quilt. Some communities are disturbed so often, they never become stable. Now, when we talk about a climax community and the land getting back to its climax community, it's referring to the organisms that almost fully populated an area. And they're usually found at the end of an area growing back or where they're growing. And these are the trees and everything. Once all the grass stops growing, you have all these trees like we looked at on the end of the picture. That is a climax community. It's at the end of the illustration after several years. All right, so succession after human disturbance and studying patterns. Well, ecosystems may or may not recover from human-made disturbances. We do a great job of screwing up ecosystems. Now, it is possible for humans to change a microclimate and soil enough to prevent the regrowth of the original community. Now, ecologists compare similarities and differences among succession areas, looking where they're the same, where they're different, and where humans have interfered. And they have found that in primary succession, where there was no life to begin with, remember, this is where pioneer species come in, and primary means first, they have found that in primary succession, it always begins with seeds or spores that later gives way to other organisms. They continue to study places where disturbances are to further their understanding and to look for changes. And that's it for this one. Pretty uh, short and sweet. Uh, make sure you understand the difference between primary and secondary succession. Make sure you understand climax community. Those are things I can almost guarantee are going to show up on your next test or on your state test. If you have any questions, you can always uh, post in the comments below or send me an email and we'll see you guys next time.